Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk. Welcome back, guys. Thanks for tuning in. This episode of World of Tanks we have today, Deadhead 65. Deadhead 65 is driving his Jackson Tier 6 American TD, but turreted TD. Eh, basically a Heavium, I guess, or a medium, a medium V. <laughs> I don't know. It hits pretty hard with 240 Alpha. Has okay armor, not amazing. And he is here on this crazy, all these crazy blowed up ships. This is like the combination of World of Warships and World of Tanks, but the warships are done fighting. They've all died. He has a Cromwell making a runner. All right, man, a couple things. You're going to see this multiple times today. Um, and, and I assume you know this. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the very obvious thing, that lead fire is a thing, all right? So, and a lot of times this has to do with getting used to the tank and the gun that you're playing. Depending on how much you played it, you start to get an idea of how much lead fire it needs. Uh, based on the distance, based on the speed of the target, based on the shell velocity are all three of the biggest things, obviously, that you, you've got to take into account. So, and you're going to do this multiple times, so watch out. You probably need a little bit more lead fire on some of these shots that you're taking. So we, we missed the Cromwell, but he's not long for the world. That poor guy's thinking, well, that's a bummer. So much for this game. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. All right. We're going to have a really good game here, guys. We're going to watch Deadhead. He's going to carry. He's going to Koblenovs. He's going to stand against so many bad guys, and it's going to be awesome. But every time I see a game like that, I always ask myself, well, how did we get there? All right, when we get there, and we do a great job and we win, booyah. High five, good job, well done. Send out the medals, start the band, you know, the whole nine yards. Have a parade, hooray. But the question for me is always, well, how did we get there? You know, what, what happened before that got us to 1VX, whatever it is? And a lot of times the answer is, well, we didn't play really great to begin with, or we made some errors along the way. That did not preserve some of my team's hit points. I was fighting maybe in the wrong place. All the things that that one player can do, right? Obviously, there's 14 other players. They're responsible for their bit. But we're only talking about what uh, Deadhead does. Here's another lead fire kind of idea. That was it, right? So not bad. He wasn't moving very fast. Got a little lead fire and the bullet got to him when he got to that point. So we're in a TD and we're kind of doing the I'm a TD thing. I'm not a huge fan of this position. Why? Because it's very passive. It requires enemy team to come to, to us, which it is currently doing. So that is working out for Deadhead. I like going up where the T29 is and the E2 is, especially with a 240 alpha punchy gun like this thing has. You'd have done a lot of good work over there. But of course, you're facing an IS, a KV-3, and a T29, and you're not long for the world if a couple of those guys punch you in the face. So we hang out in that spot. We get a couple shots, and then I thought, well, okay, let's, let's explore this. Okay, well, that's fine. Let's explore this. I think it's a little bit dangerous based on spots like up here, uh, over here, we're going to come around the corner. There's another bushed up area over there. But there's not much going on in the middle, so I'm okay with this. There, this fight's still going on here. It looks like the poor Thunderbolt's about to lose. But there are campers here that which should stop them. It looks like the north is having trouble. So you know what? Maybe, just maybe, a little bit of relieving of the pressure by moving up here and causing a little bit of mayhem here might work out for my team. Okay, We're not losing necessarily, but our positioning is kind of bad. All right, so it's four to three. We have an advantage of one kill. Our positioning is kind of bad. I thought, all right, this, this will be all right. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if he can find some guys and, and cause some mayhem. So he's careful about it. Comes out. Deadhead's looking around. See who we're going to make dead. What is up with the, with the ships anyway? <laughs> what has happened here to cause these ships to be in this frozen fjord? You know what I'm saying? All right, so we've got a 3045. Thank goodness he didn't see me. There's a lot of tanks here with bad view range. This happens a couple times here. All right, so we see the 304. And I'm like, yes, kill the 304. That'll be fantastic. But we don't have a really good shot on him. And I'm sort of wondering why we don't just move down a little bit and open up that shot. We haven't been spotted anyway. Unlikely that anyone in this bush didn't see us. And if we move another five inches or five feet forward, they are going to see us. We could get exposed if we get seen by the 304 to shots coming back at us and get on the right thing. The shots coming back at us from the 34, what is it, 3485 that's headed up the ramp right there. The EBR is still unknown. He's kind of a, a X factor, but I think I could have got myself a better shot to make sure that 304 goes away. That's a good kill. Also, the 3485 is going up the ramp, so let's see what happens here. 
Deadhead kind of sees that. The 3045 is chogging up the hill. Okay, 3485 is going up the hill. That's interesting. Oh, can't see him quite yet, but we don't look at it. I just zoomed out and went, all right, what's he doing? No, he's not quite there yet. All right, uh, let's just zoom in here and see if we can get another shot on him. Again, if we'd have moved forward, we might have been able to get that shot. Hey, what's that guy doing now? Oh, wait a minute. Now I can get a shot on this guy. Let's just scooch forward and start working on 3485. We'll just ignore this Artie for a moment. Let's get rid of this 3485 who's trying to push on our 3002. All right, so prioritization of the right target is hugely important in this game and getting channelized attention looking through the soda straw one thing just because I have shots there is not necessarily the best idea so on a relatively long reload tank like this my camera technique is to always go what the hell else is going on oh wait a minute that 3045 scooch forward oh I have shots on him I'll get back to you later Artie scum and start shooting that guy all right so we're gonna hang out here we're really really fixated by golly we're gonna get this 30 304 Oop, that didn't work darn it see what I'm saying if we'd have moved forward, probably two of those hits would have gone in. Now, we hit the guy. He shows zero awareness. Until then, he's like, oh, crap, someone's hitting me. And then we see this. Finally, we're looking at that guy. We help him go down. Okay, good. And slowly, what's going on? Uh, what? Soda straw, man. Just zoom out. It's so hard to look around the battlefield like this. Right? It's like, all right, what's, where's the target? Just zoom out. What's going on? Where is that 304? Is he going to cross that open area? What's going on in front of me? 304, I haven't been spotted. You know what I'm saying? So start looking around. A little bit better camera technique. All right, we're in kind of a critical phase now. The enemy team is doing... And here's another lead fire example. Oh, that's so painful. That guy should have been dead. That guy should have been so dead. And all I had to do is aim about right there. But we aim center of mass to slightly behind, and we miss. All of a sudden, we have a Panzer IV. This blew my mind. This guy is right there. We actually hit him. But he didn't get, he didn't spot us. <laughs> that was, that guy has absolutely atrocious, atrocious view range. All right, now assess what's going on. Here's probably one of the biggest points. That whole engagement could have gone better. I think he probably could have got the 304 dead and the T3485 a little bit faster right there. Snapshot on the Panzer IV is what it is. But what's going on in the game? Well, your Thunderbolt lasted a pretty long time, but he eventually got beat, and you've got a push going on. These are your active... i get over here again. These are your active enemy tanks and another group of active enemy tanks, and anything over here is passive or arty. So it's time to get away from the passive Panzer IV and just let him sit there. Get back and help the silly KB-2. All you got to do is turn around and, and come up this. There's another ravine over on this side or come up in the middle here or potentially this one right here and start looking for some of these guys. I think I would have fallen back towards the KB-2 and gone up. It's hard to see. Again, I got to go on the right map here. Stop it, you stupid thing. There we go. I'd have gone back through this right here and headed up to help the KB-2. But we're just we're just thinking, all right, we're gonna get this Panzer IV, man. That guy, that's the last guy we saw, so we go after him. Look at what's going on. That E2 is pushing your KV2. Once that KV2 loses, that whole flank is, has fallen, and you are the only guy over here who can get back there and help those guys. So you need to be moving back that way immediately. And this is that point where when I said at the beginning of the video, I wonder how we got there. This is a huge reason of how we got there, and we finally start to react. We're going to head on back this way. Let's see if we can go and get these guys. And I finally went, oh, good. Thank goodness. We're going to go help. We drive up on that. Oh, boy. And here we go. Here we go. Going back towards it. And, oh, look. A JP's 4. <laughs> so <laughs> that is the moth to a flame. The good news here, Deadhead, is you're absolutely looking at the minimap. The bad news is you're misprioritized, misprioritized, easy for me to say. Your priorities are wrong. <laughs> Keep on going after those guys. Don't, don't even worry. In fact, I would have protected myself from the JP4 by going right up this ravine and just murderize these dudes up here. Get rid of these two. These are the aggressive ones, all right? Get on the right map again. These two dudes are the aggressive ones up here. They have to go, right? You get rid of these guys. Preserve your KV2. Don't worry about him. He's not going anywhere. He'll still be there later on. Don't do it such that you give that clown shots, which means don't go this way. Go up this way and protect yourself. This is that multi-bogey environment. You want to fight more than one at a time. 
you're going to go help the KB2 get rid of this guy along with the GW and the M44 and this silly Eagle 7 who's been sitting on this thing. Has he been there the whole time? I think he has. That that guy is a troll or a bot because we'll see what happens to him in just a minute. But what happens for you is you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to get this. I'm going to kill this guy. This would be great. This was weird. What? <laughs> Where'd that shot go? <laughs> that was amazing. That looked like it was tracking straight at him. So he either bounced or what the client showed you was wrong. And then we just get a little unlucky. It goes a little high. And oops, there goes our KV2. And here goes the Hotchkiss. This was funny. I thought the Hotchkiss actually run, ran into the wall and blew up, but he actually got shot. Because <laughs> you can't run into walls and blow up anymore. Can you? I don't know. I can't remember. Now there's the E2. And we're just we're staring at this JP4. Meanwhile, your team is losing back at the cap. JP4 backs off. There goes the Eagle 7. He's got a plan. Let's see, what's his hit points now? He took a hit. He's definitely got a plan, though. He's going to go execute that plan here momentarily. Just watch what happens, guys. Another fantastic player. Finally, we start moving up here to help out. I'm going to speed up just a bit because we drive up here. Our team's got big trouble. We come up top. They're actually on the cap, and we can't see them. That's pretty amazing. Even with the Binox, we're not burning through whatever it is he's hiding on. Now he's not on the thing. So you got two mediums back there, the Hellcat and the SU. Oh, did we already lose our uh, Eagle 7? He went and drowned himself. I you probably saw that. Oh, good. The M44's lost in battle, so I assume he shot himself. So <laughs> it's That's fantastic, man. The whole team's giving up. I the poor SU is wondering, what the heck? Where's all my buddies going? And it doesn't matter because now he's dead. And it is now a 1v, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we go up to a pretty good spot. We actually catch this dude making a runner. We take him down. He doesn't spot us. Unbelievable. Terrible view range. We'll just speed this thing up. We're going to hang out here for a while. Oh, here comes this dude. This dude just drives in. And he's like, I don't know. What was that? I'll oh, just go to the cap. We'll be fine. No big deal. <laughs> okay, he dies. Oh, this is great. So, we're going to speed this up again. We're waiting for the next guy to show up. What's happening? I don't know. Where is everybody? Who knows? Hanging out, hanging out. <laughs> so awesome, man. This sequence is pretty unbelievable, actually. Nicely done, though. So, I think this is about as good a spot as you're going to get. And we find the Yardy just kind of trucking along. He goes right by. Finally gets spotted. He's thinking, oh, this is a bummer. Boop. And we back out just in time. Holy cow, he doesn't hit us. Artillery shoots at us. We'll come out. He's holed down, but he's actually not doing it very well. We hit the we hit the dirt. That's too bad. That probably got us spotted again. And unfortunately, we make a mistake coming out at this guy. Because he's reloaded. Ow, that hurt. Slaps us with 230. Ow, there's the artillery. Gets us for only 13. Thank goodness. Good news is we know which direction that guy is. The 304 is over there somewhere, right? That's where he hit us from. I like this idea of coming around the other way. Look at him staring at the wrong spot. <laughs> that was awesome. So we take that dude down. We're going to speed this up a lot because we drive up here. I think this is not a bad idea because you can get back to the cap. We go to this spot. We clearly know about it. Taking a look, taking a look, watching the geyser blast. What's happening? Don't know. Where's the JPZ4? More than likely at this point, he's finally probably pushed forward. I imagine when it was just you, he actually was attempting to come across the open area to come help his T-29 and just ended up bailing out of that when the T-29 died. So we're going to come around here. Like, all right, what is going on? Looking around. For, oh, there he is, just driving around the backfield. He sees us. He misses. Good for us. Bad for him. And now we've just got to find this 304. And you knew the 304 shot you from that direction. I think at least you, that's what it looks like you're doing, just trucking towards there. I think somebody actually has a comment in the comms down there about what the heck are you doing. But I think you kind of knew where he was. Oh, look at him. He's on. I just watch artillery die. It's always a fantastic. Oh, boy. Wow. Yep. See, there's that lead fire again, man. So I think you need to work on that, definitely. And if you do any ski, that was not bad. A look, again, just a little bit behind where, where he needed to shoot. If you do any hunting or skeet shooting or you play any video games that are like that, realize that you know, you got to aim out in front of it. If something coming, in my case, it's left to right. Was it different? It's probably different on the screen. Yeah, it's right to left on the screen. 
but you need to aim out in front of them so that the bullet and the thing meet, right? And, and I, I'm not trying to insult you. I'm assuming you actually know that, but in the game, it's clearly a little more than you're thinking with this particular with this particular gun and tank because you did it three or four times. But nicely done, man. Seven kills, 2,150 damage. But really for me on this one, really nice job once you got to that point and you really got hurt by your Eagle 7 that just being a troll and drowning himself and then the M44 killed himself. I mean, <laughs> so nice comeback as far as that goes. You weren't getting a lot of help. Okay, early positioning. I like going north, but that's just me. I'm a, I'm a, a lot more aggressive. I thought it was not a problem while you were getting shots. And then you move forward. I, I like the idea of maybe let's go relieve some pressure. You did a little damage, caused a little bit of mayhem in the middle. But I think at that point, you had a real opportunity to fall back and help your KV-2 and those guys. Preserve some of those guys' hit points and then turn around and worry about the KV-2 or the T-29 and the rest of those guys. But like I said, that's the question. You know, when I get to that 1v7... Did I really need to be there? And what can I do next time to not be there? If you do get there, nice job doing it. You uh, you ended up carrying this poor team, which frankly, <laughs> most of them didn't deserve to be carried, but you did it. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the uh, subscriptions and the views and all that stuff. If you want other ways to support the channel, there's a bunch of them down in the description down there. And we will see you.